Anyone come across a word called tabula rasa? Tabula rasa. Okay, it's a Latin word that basically means a blank slate. And this is how a blank slate looks like. It's blank. There's nothing written on it. Um, however, in, in the way we've uh, grown up, uh, listening to our grandparents, to our fathers, our sisters, our aunties and uncles, usually they, uh, they start with the story by saying in the beginning, or at least those who follow different uh, scriptures, you know, they always say in the beginning, it's ABC happened. Uh, in the beginning, the Big Bang happened. So we also have a, a difference in uh, the way we say it in the beginning in our traditional languages. The Magana will say, Awaratuka. The Masoga will say something similar. Now I'm going to challenge every one of us. If you're not a Muganda and Soga, I would like you to just tell us how you say it in the beginning in your language. Everyone, what's the point of time? <laughs> okay, that's one. Anybody else willing to share? Yes? Eh, I hope you all heard. Could you just say it out loud? Naibandili. Okay, or well, what language is that? That's Lingala. Lingala. Uh -huh. Anybody else? If, you, if nobody is going to raise their hands, we're going to make you all dance Lingala. That's for the topic of today, Gutenberg. How do we tell our, our story? Uh, my name is Lawrence Bahira. Uh, I'm on Twitter. And I'm on Chigai as my handle. Uh, many people don't know how that comes up. I'm a chica by tribe, but I'm a guy. So I just put the two together, so I'm a chica. Um, I'm also on the same name, on chigai.com, that's where I do my blogging. Um, things started by evolution, okay? First, the Neanderthal all the way till the modern man. But there was one thing that was particular about it. The early man had his own tools that he used, the stones that were shaped into hammers, they were shaped, the knives were shaped also from stone. But as time went on, as we evolved, as we became more civilized, man got modern tools, like the hairbrushes that we do get, so we're able to comb our hair without actually hurting our scalps. Okay? So those are the modern tools that we do have. And to be honest, that's the reason why we have Gutenberg today. It started with us having simple tools that we did use, and eventually we came up with something that was a lot more um, complex, in a way, in quotes, but it is something that is going to help us do a lot more work in an easier fashion, okay? All right, so at the beginning of WordPress, we had what we call the classic editor, which uh, I think if you've used WordPress before, it allows you to just do basic things. You paste your information, you add a picture, and voila, everything else is up to you to be able to make it look better, look a lot nicer. But there was one problem. This classic editor is not sufficient for building and maintaining complex pages. Let's say if uh, you're a designer and you have a design that is very intricate in nature, it's very, it's very hard for you to use the classic editor to be able to handle your content and yet also utilize design in, uh, in, in, in ways that are eye-catching and memorable. So the other thing that we realized about the classic editor um, is that the, the, it's what you see, imagine you're putting things together and eventually you think, okay, now I've got the perfect look this thing is supposed to be. Now you go down on the front end, this is the back end. What you're seeing here is the back end. But you make your nice, pretty structure and everything and then you go on the front end and then you have a big space coming from up to down because you pressed enter a million times. Uh, you find the picture is not as big as it should be, but you're thinking, I did this and it looked perfect, what happened to it? So those are some of the challenges we, we got with uh, the classic editor. However, you know, people are smart, and I've been talking about evolution, from Aleman to the modern man. 
some people came, became creative and said, you know what? We can't actually tap into this classic editor and then we can build plugins because WordPress is so extensible. It allows you to tap into what is already existing and make things that are yours, uh, things that allow you to do certain things in a way that you would prefer to have them. So people build plugins. Um, you could be able to write your own short codes and you could be able to write your own small pins, uh, such as the ones like, you see we have the bold, the italics and so on. You could be able to come up with your own style and write a small plugin to help you achieve that. But that was hard. That was tedious. That took developer time. That took you calling the pop and telling them, are you available? Can you do this for me? Then they take five years doing it. By the five years are done, by the time the five years are done, you're actually not interested in that. You want actually something that is completely different. So, with that, enters Gutenberg. And we're going to have a small demo. We're going to have someone who has, uh, fairly is the wrong one to use, someone who is starting out how to use Gutenberg. So we want to see how you would experience it, being something new, how would you experience it? So I'm going to call Serena to come and work with me through this. Everyone, my name is Serena, and I'm glad to work with Lawrence. Actually, it's a plugin right now. Yes. So, how? I've been. I've been using, I've been trying to learn how to use this editor. I am not a developer, so I don't, I may not know the developer challenges, but at least because I'm a writer and I blog, um, my experience is, number one is, this editor actually has blogs, a blog, yes. So as Lawrence mentioned, it helps, this editor helps you work with blogs. Um, I already have the blogs here. Um, now the first blog is, it's your fault I'm fat, so, your fault. So this is actually the heading right now. And it came from the blog there, so we are, yeah, I'm putting it down here just to show you what, how I got to that heading of oh, it's your fault. I am um, that that way. Yes, and then it also helps you change the color. Uh, I wonder if people who have been using the classic editor have been able to change the background and the background color and then the font color. Anyone? How have you been doing it? Hmm? Coding? Yes, you've been coding. Uh, but the good news here is you don't need to code anymore because this, this, in the, okay, in the blog, you already now, like in the paragraph, let's go to the paragraph, you already have, what would you call it? The blog is, the editing tool is already there. So, the challenge I find with this is it's very hard for you to know where to get the editing tool, the color, how to change the color. Because while I began, I actually had to call Lawrence and ask him, so how do I get to change the background color and how do I get to change the font color? So I tried to look at the surface and it was really hard for me to get the color until when he came and then he showed me that I ha actually had to go to settings. I know most of you have my look at the screen here. <laughs> you see? Yes. So where do I go? Color setting. So I'll go to the color setting and I'll change. You see? That's the background color. And then I'll be able also to change the text color. So you don't need to point, it's already working. Um. 
She's going to preview for us. I, I'm not so sure <laughs> that is working, so she's going to preview for us. Embedded where you get your tweet. Okay, you can get a tweet from from Twitter, or maybe you can get a link from YouTube and actually embed it in the in the post. So just imagine I have the Mochi guy here who is a famous blogger, and I need a following. I can just go to his Twitter and then get a tweet here. Yes, that one. So I can go to his Twitter and then get that link and embed it in the blog post that I'm working on. And then I'll be, let's do it, right? Oh, so which guy should I do? Who else has been tweeted? By the way, um, we have the on the screen, right? Yes, so I'm copying that link. Yes. And, uh, okay, we are working on this. Yeah, so, I want to add it somewhere. So I'm going to go to my ad blog and then say Twitter. And I will put the link there and say invest. Let's see. Um, I think we have the tweet in our in our editor right there. Yeah. The way to look on Twitter, right? So, then, Arthur, can you help me delete that tweet? something that was very interesting to you and you want to keep keep your your readers focused and maybe or link them to a certain tweet um, in the front view you will have the tweet so it will never go like you you can never you, it will never go away it will never go away in that your 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 followers will always keep following like okay the content will be in, in line with whatever you're writing right like when you're reading the content is in line with everything but imagine i was writing something and then i that the tweet that got deleted actually is nowhere but then the conversation about shows that I was talking about something that is missing. That means followers get bored with my conversations. But now, even though you delete the tweet, someone will always follow up. Basically, what she's saying is, if the tweet was your, um, your reference. The, the what? The tweet? The what? What? The tweet, of course. Oh, yes. Um, and then the other thing is, okay, where I find it, you know with a classic editor, when you're typing the words, you can easily count them. Those of you who are using a classic editor, you can see the countdown, right? Yes? Right or wrong? You're my famous blog. Please help me. The traditional way. So you just right click here and go to classic editor. 
So I just think Maria lies to me because before I came here, I first asked her. So for you, how would you count? Because usually me, I count my words in Microsoft Word before I post them. I failed to find personally. I failed to find. <laughs> no, she did like there's a word count, right down there. Um, yes. Now me, it has always been hard. I already first put my words in Microsoft Word and then get the account so I can post them. Because I am part of a, 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 a first counting them in Microsoft Word, then I post them. However, the good news with thank you Maria. The good news now is I can see the word count down here. However, we I think it's very hard for now looking at the classic editor and then this this button back editor. If you don't know where the word count is, you can never know if you can find the if you can count the words. Can anyone see where we can count the words from? So that's the problem because we all can see where the words are. But the good news is, if you see this, the information where is content structure, you can actually click on it and see that you have 413 words, 6 paragraphs, and 10 books. Wow. Thank you, I actually do you know about the word count, and right now I'm going to become a prophet and tell you what the future will be like. It will be like this. Or at least I hope that it will be. <laughs> that is what our future looks like. We're going to have uh, slay judges, okay? <laughs> yeah. So that's what we'll have. Um, but the future for us is is modern JavaScript. Now JavaScript, for those that don't know, is a, a, a programming language that you use. JavaScript is growing every single day. As a high-level language, it's growing every day and it's allowing people to develop things that are Way, way better. So Gutenberg is built on, on JavaScript and a particular branch that is called React, React JavaScript. So it's allowing us to do things like this. Um, it's allowing us to make a couple of sites. Initially, WordPress was used to store information as a content management system. But we are going to be able to create a couple of sites whereby, yes, you have WordPress managing your content, editing it like you've been saying, you just copy it from your word, paste it in your Gutenberg, and then allow yourself to develop a mobile app or to develop a, a website that's completely detached from the payment structure of WordPress, if you want it, using the, the, the REST API. But there are a couple of things that we can benefit from uh, Gutenberg. Gutenberg is not, is not only going to remain as an editor. From what uh, the team automatic has been explaining to us, it's not going to remain only as an editor. It is going to go into other places. Like in the widgets section, for those who have used widgets, Gutenberg is going to go into the widgets. It's going to go into the customizer, for those that use the customizer. And it's basically going to take over the whole publishing experience that we do have currently in WordPress. But it's going to give us a plus. We shall be able to edit on the front end. I mean, you just log in and edit on the front end. You just write in your article and place it in the way. They're able to change their colors if they want to. They're able to change some backgrounds to a place where they don't have to come to you and say, please change this color of this line for me. They can actually do it on their own. Okay? So it was really bright, so I want you to be very, very happy. <laughs> so don't worry, be happy. Uh, Gutenberg is going to be a good thing. Um, it's Gutenberg, uh, just this is for people who get worried. Initially, I was also worried. I was worried as a developer, am I going to lose my job? Am I going to lose uh, so many things that I've come to learn? But it's just an editor right now. So it's not going to affect your content that you have existing. I know Gutenberg is going to be released in the next WordPress version 5.0. It's going to come in, but it's not going to destroy your content. It will leave your content in a block called the classic block. Classic block. So unless you choose to modify that content, it will remain the way it was initially. But even if you change it, uh, WordPress has made everything so easy that you just click one button and everything is just 
put in the block that it should be. So you can just straighten out a couple of things that you will be good. Um, yeah, so if you're really worried about that, you can install the, the classic editor plugin that's also available. It's going to be available until 2021. So you can be able to learn and adjust, okay? You adjust the button back, but you still have your fallback, which is the classic editor. Now, this is a quote I got from my nursery teacher who said, with modern JavaScript comes modern tools, okay? So, <laughs> yeah, my nursery teacher, <laughs> back in the day. So with modern JavaScript, you come, modern tools, okay? So please enjoy the modern tools. And what we need to do is we need to learn JavaScript for us developers. We need to learn it, we need to love it, and we need to use it, okay?